and welcome to another episode of the Savvy Chick Show on ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm your host, Chantelle Seville. Welcome all. Thank you again for tuning in. I'm very excited to have our guest all the way from Melbourne in Australia. She's a personal brand and image expert, a red lipstick addict, and a keynote speaker who's doing and taking over the, the country by storm in Australia. Now, today's topic is the power of authentic personal branding. If you don't know what that is, our wonderful, gorgeous, inspiring, and empowering guest, Colette Worden, is about to tell you how. Welcome, Colette. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Well, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. We've been wanting to have you on the show for ages, but with your recent tour and having you here, there, and everywhere, I mean, I know it's hard to, to get you in. So thank you so much um, for coming on. Now, tell us, what is, what's going on in Australia with this, this personal branding um, that we're hearing a lot about, especially when it comes to entrepreneurs and their businesses? Yeah, personal branding is such a buzz term uh, these days. It's so huge in America, massive in Europe. And it's a movement where entrepreneurs are now stepping out from, you know, hiding behind a business name and stepping out as the face of their brand and putting themselves out there so they can make their difference. And then ideally having their market connect with them as people and their values. Um, and it's such a powerful, powerful way of um, doing business authentically and powerfully, if you will. And do you think that then that attracts more customers that are more relevant for for their business or, or how do you think that's sort of helping by them showing up and yeah so if we think about america tv shows for example america is really well known for creating uh, tv shows around a brand in australia we create tv shows around a topic and then we slip the talent uh, within that now, if we think about it from a business perspective, if you think about Richard Branson, Richard Branson has developed such a strong personal brand that no matter what he does, we will buy from him if we are attracted to his values. So he started off the Virgin Airlines, music, um, finance. So the power of personal branding is that if we put ourselves out there and share ourselves authentically and our values consistently, then no matter what we're doing, our market will follow us and buy from us no matter what we do. That makes complete sense because basically you're building trust. Like if they understand who you are and you're... Um, just showing up authentically, then people are more likely to trust you, and if they're more likely to trust you, then they're more likely to buy from you. But I guess if you can't see the face behind what you're buying, it makes it a little bit more not as personal, perhaps? Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. And even for the business owner themselves, I mean, um, it's such a liberating experience putting yourself out there as the face of your brand, being only you rather than someone who you think you should be in business. Um, it's such a sustainable way of um, creating success in business. And does that, like, is that for introverts and extroverts? Absolutely. I'm an introvert myself and I'm high, <laughs> a high anxious being. So I, I get all my energy from being by myself. So I structure my business um, around that. Um, but introverts and extroverts alike can be successful personal brands in business. Absolutely. Perfect. We're looking forward to hearing more about that. But before we start that, I just want a little snapshot of everything that you, like, you do. Because it's not just the personal branding. There's much you know many other things with that so what other services do you provide just in a little snapshot we'll go into them further in the second segment but just enough to give us an idea of what is um, call it word in australia what it's all about so my team and i what we do is we work with entrepreneurs and professionals who are great at what they do we help them develop the confidence to put themselves out there authentically so we do that through personal branding development through image development we teach them how to present on camera and on stage we shoot their headshot and website photography so that at every touch point of the brand when it comes to a visual image perspective it's all um, consistent so do you find often people that create a brand are very similar to what that brand offers is that uh, a tricky question uh, maybe <laughs> not always the art of authentic personal branding is being no one other than who you really are. Mm -hmm. So um, for a long time, the, the, you know, the, the concept of personal branding is about cr was about creating a cookie-cutter version of what a successful brand is. Um, our philosophy is that there is no cookie-cutter version. The only successful version is you. Um, and it's about enhancing that, packaging that, and putting that out there confidently. Because it makes sense. I mean, I can't be your brand. I mean, we, we, have, we have different values and different things, even though a lot might be similar we're still not the same. So if I tried to follow everything that it took to be your brand, I wouldn't be myself. So that's, um, that's quite interesting and powerful. Is this something that you've always been good at? Like, have you always been good at people and style and um, picking that? I've always been obsessed with people. I know that um, my, my favorite hobby, even to this date, is sitting at a cafe, 
with a tea now because I don't drink coffee anymore and just people stalking. I just watch and I'm obsessed with people. Um, I look at the pieces of fabric that they wear. I look how they move, how they talk, how they communicate. Um, and that interest and obsession has always been there. And um, I'm really, truly grateful that I'm in an industry where I get to work with people so closely. And is it, so is it from when you were a young age, is that what you did as well? Like, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, man, I had no idea. I was lost up until I was 28, to be honest. Uh, I thought I wanted to do interior design, advertising, marketing. I wanted to be a TV presenter. I wanted to be a graphic designer. I wanted to take over the corporate world. I had absolutely no idea. But the neatest thing is you're doing all those right now. <laughs> you're doing them all. <laughs> so, so that confusion has actually led to your success. <laughs> So, you know, I um, hear the term, I fell into it, I fell into what I do, but I truly believe for me it was universal guidance, that everything that I did up until that, that day of deciding this is it for me, um, helped me get to where I am today. Because they say, even uh, I read something about Steve Jobs and how he did a calligraphy course, and that is what made, you know, Mac have its different fonts, which is something interesting, like you never know what you're doing and how that's going to enhance what you do later in life, so it's pretty um pretty interesting. What did you study after school though? What was, what did you actually think you were doing first when you finished high school? <laughs> Marketing and international trade and um, I, I attended about six classes before I decided that university wasn't for me. I was more, um, more interested in reading by myself than actually attending a class. And then so what did you do from there? Ah, so from, okay, so I went to university, tried to study marketing and international trade, started applying for marketing jobs anyway and started getting them. I thought, oh, I don't need a degree, ego got ahead of me. <laughs> um, and then I just kept jumping from job to job. I mean, I, I, I went into retail and I started off as an assistant and then worked my way up to an area manager. Um, and then I was like, oh, I'm bored of this, I'll move on. Um, then I started running, sorry, TV presenting. I went for a job um, at a promotional agency and she said to me, oh, you don't get this job, but we need a presenter for a campaign that, we, that we're that we doing. Would you be interested? And I went, TV presenting, what a load of shit that is. <laughs> and then I came back to weeks later going, okay, I don't have a job. I'm interested. What do I have to do? So she sent me to a TV presenting course. Long story really short, the first course that I ever did to learn how to TV present is the course that I ended up teaching for seven years and how to teach people to present to camera. And then within that organization, they also ran image development classes. And I started running that and I fell in love. Fell so in love it, you it. accidentally fell into this because you're like, oh, it's a job, I'll get paid, I'll do this presenting thing if you want me to as long as you give me some money for it and we'll see how we go. And then, yeah. so how, was that a long course that you had to do or the presenting to camera? Presenting the camera course was about seven weeks. Um, and from there, I went on to Channel 31 and, and then Foxtel and then Channel 10. So it was a great, a great stint. And TV presenting will always be a vehicle. Um, I just now know that when I enter the TV industry again, it will be doing this, talking about this, what I'm doing now, personal branding and image development. Which is, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a vehicle and that's, um, that's what you use it for. But it's so interesting to see, like that you said that you worked in retail. And I mean, a lot of what you've done, especially in the past, has really been, you know, you're, you're known or you still are known as the real sort of style and image guru in Australia. So it's kind of neat how you just, you know, took it from the store and then the presenting and then, uh, you know, watching people and, you know, molded it all up and, and <laughs> created an empire from it. So that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty clever. Was it just an intuitive it. thing or how did, did they just start matching? Yeah, um, intuitive thing is a really good way of putting it. It just, I started doing what felt good. Um, started doing what I really, I don't say I want to be doing, well, my soul knew I needed to be doing this and for a long time I resisted it. Um, that's how I've, I've looked back and, and I guess summed it up as. And so when did you decide that you wanted to start a business or how did that exactly come about? Uh, so starting a business for me was, um, I was under the belief that I didn't have a skill set that anybody would employ, so I had no choice but to start a business. And um, a true I also, entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first year of business, I was lying in my bed going, "What the fuck am I doing? I've got, I've got no clients. I've got no money. I've got rent for next week." Um, and I was just like, "Come on, I've got to make this work." And so I just committed to consistency. I remember the first time I put, you know, my very first Facebook post up really publicly saying what, I, what it is that I was doing and I was so nervous and I just said to myself Colette just commit to consistency the next day get up and post about it again um, and just commit to that and that's how it just took off 
That's really catchy, commit to consistency, because I think often I talk a lot about like the healthy lifestyle, and that's what it is. It's committing to consistency. You know, even if you don't do it all the time, it's just, just consistency will pay off in the end as long as you're consistent. <laughs> so, so you started just consistently doing it, and how long ago was that? That was five, oh, really four and a half years ago now. And then from yeah. then it just sort of, you know, kept evolving and, and becoming... I guess what you're doing today. What, so what was the first thing you did? What, what, what was the business? How did it exactly sort of start? Yeah. It started off as personal styling and my very first client was a pro bono client. Um, she was, I met her at a shopping center, uh, at a cafe and she said, I need clothes for an art exhibition. I've been walking around not finding anything and I'm like, oh hey, luckily I know how to do this. How about I take you around and we find you an outfit. Um, and then we found her an outfit. I went to her art exhibition and I remember looking at her in front of her media wall going, wow, she looks incredible. She's owning it. And I fell in love with, with using pieces of fabric to really elevate self-confidence. And we're friends to this date. And from there, she just referred some people, they referred more people and it grew. And now there's a team of us. So when you were going to start this business and you weren't, you know, very good at school and kind of <laughs> left, uh, left out on your marketing, marketing degree, did people say, you're crazy, this is not possible, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> like, how are you going to start a business? You know what's really interesting? I had the opposite. I had people around me that were saying, you can do this, you, you can do whatever you set your mind to. It was me that was doubting myself. So I had to do, learn how to deal with my inner demons to get myself through it. That's awesome. So it's actually, and that's the neat thing, I, and that's why I love sharing different stories on the Savvy Chick Show is because, you know, often people, it's like, what are you doing? You can't do this. But I mean, you must have some cool people around you. <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> yeah, everyone, you need to surround yourself with people like that who believe in you because there's something that's really empowering about people who believe in you more than you believe in yourself because we all know believing in yourself is not easy. <laughs> so when you can have people around you that believe in you, it's, pretty, um, it's a pretty special experience. So they obviously saw something in you that you didn't quite at the time and are they still all around you absolutely yeah that's and ha are you loving having a business oh I'm loving it I the whole concept of being able to create whatever I set my mind to and with a team that's that loves it and supports me just as much it's just so exciting it really is because I don't want to get into it quite yet because we'll have a break just shortly here but I do definitely want to hear more about like each uh, in the services you provide so we can understand how they're helping people and how this has become such a big impact in Australia and globally because I know that you do do some work overseas as well um, but just like a couple other things can you share sometimes when you've had an obstacle and how you overcame it like if you were mentioning you don't believe in yourself sometimes like how did you teach yourself to overcome that or how do you perhaps consistently teach yourself these days to overcome that yeah my uh, my biggest obstacle um is my mind. So I'm, I believe my mind, just like everyone else's mind is extremely powerful and it has the power to create our own living hell. So if it's powerful enough to do that, it's also powerful enough to create our own living dream. And so what I've, um, coming out of a really dark phase of my life, um, I knew that to be able to change everything that I was doing, I need to just first be conscious of the thoughts that were creating my reality. So for me, what's super important is being really conscious of what I'm thinking and as a result of that, what I'm creating. So I know that I'm um, putting myself out there is, is nerve wracking for me. I, I had anxiety attacks around it, but I just know that my purpose is bigger than my fear. And that's something that I consistently work on for myself and something that I help our clients do as well. The purpose is bigger than the fear. I like that. And we're just going to hold it on that note, take you to a short break. We'll be back with you soon on the Savvy Chick Show with Colette Worden. Thanks for tuning in. Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. 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 I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha.
Aloha and welcome back to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. We're back for the second segment of the show with Colette Warden, who is a personal image and brand expert as well as a keynote speaker and a red lipstick addict. Now before we continue, what is this red lipstick addict all about? Where did it come from, Colette? <laughs> Well, when I was um, going through my loss period of I don't know what I'm doing, one of the roles that I um, fell into was uh, the PR and marketing manager for Lani Hill. And I remember the very first day that I walked into her office, she said, we wear red lipstick here. And so I was so resistant against putting red lipstick on because I never worn it before in my life. I'm like, oh, this feels disgusting. Yet as soon as I put it on and looked at myself in the mirror, I went, oh, I actually really like this. And it became this habitual thing that I do every single day that became a getting into the zone, um, getting ready, and I felt really powerful. So um, I just committed to it. Oh, I it's like that. So getting into the zone and, and like that's where you get your power from, is that something that you teach people as well? Because that seems, I like that. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we teach style point of difference. So using uh, pieces of fabric or your image um, as your biggest marketing tool and finding one thing that you can commit to consistently that you become known for. So I, for me, a really strong part of my brand is the red lipstick and the fringe. Um, for some clients, it's their glasses. For, for others, it's um, really interesting shoes. Um, if we think of Naomi Simpson of Red Balloon, she's taken that to a whole other level and all she wears is red. And in an interview, she said that that's her easiest way for her market to connect with her. Because they know it's you. Like, I, I've never seen you without red lipstick. Sometimes I wonder if you wear it to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always perfect. Not, not to, it's not just red, it's just perfect. That, that, you're very consistent on that and I'm, I've never seen you falter. So definitely keep it up. But can you share, uh, as I said in the first segment, um, I want to hear more about each of the services you provide because I think it's so unique the way you, you and your business provide and, and deliver them and... Um, yeah, I'll leave it to you to sort of share, and of course I'm going to interrupt and ask some questions along the way, but can you start sharing the different services you provide and how they're transforming lives and businesses? Sure. So overall, I'll start with the overall um, concept. You know, we, we use image development, personal branding, uh, stage and presence training, stage and camera training, and shoot headshot and photography, um, website photography. Um, the overarching thing that we do is, you know, our, we know we've done a great job when our clients say to us, I believe in myself again. My self-confidence has increased. Um, I'm speaking with certainty and I'm walking with an elevated presence. I'm also saying yes to more opportunities. And by that, they, may, they mean yes, I'm saying yes to that interview. I'm saying yes to getting my photo taken. Yes to stepping up on stage. Yes to that promotion. Um, yes to attracting a, a tribe of clients. And the best thing about it is they're dressing, walking and talking like they deserve those opportunities. So for example, when a client comes to us and says, you know what, I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I know that I'm not the, the living version of the person that I'm really working hard to become. So they do the image development process and we sit down with them and we say, okay, tell us your story. Where have you been? Where are you at now? And where are you going? And how can we create the visual representation of that person now that's running that empire? Um, what do they look like? How do they walk? How do they talk? What are they wearing? Um, so we create a personal brand brief. We get really clear on their strengths, personality traits, and how it's really important for them to be perceived. We then jump into the wardrobe and we go, all right, what are the missing links, the weakest links in here? You know, when we say we want to lose weight, you know, we go into our pantry and we remove everything that would be our weakness. You know, the Nutella goes, the chocolate goes, the wine, the cheese. <laughs> Um, so that even when we're starving, we don't even have that to rely on anymore. So the wardrobe we look at, you know, it's a place where we create ourselves every single day. Everything in there needs to be earning its place. Um, it's, can anything it, in can the it be different though? Like, can, can it be, does it have to be like one, you know, consistent style or can there be like a variety of styles as long as the person feels confident in presenting themselves in that style? Absolutely. So um, really great question. So it depends on the brand. So some brands, their brand is um, diversity. So they're all about diversity. So having eclectic and different looks is the consistent part of their brand. Um, it, it really, there is no fashion dictator. We hate fashion. We think it's the quickest way to manufacture a brand. We're all about authentic personal branding. And that means, you know, is your brand about change diversity? Then let's create a lot of looks that look inconsistent, but that's the consistent thread, if that makes sense. Perfect. Um, yeah, so um, we remove anything from the wardrobe. We remove everything from the wardrobe first. To create do the people like stop you and go, what are you doing? Don't, don't get rid of that. That's, I've had that for 20 years. Don't touch my sweater. <laughs> you know, we do talk about that. By the time we get to that stage, some clients, um, they've already built up the trust and we've built the rapport and they are looking at their clothes going, oh shit, I can't believe 
this is still in here. Um, we talk about how the wardrobe, you know, there are parts of the wardrobe that has us holding on to the past, i.e., you know, when I was 18, I looked great in this and I loved it. Um, this is the outfit that my husband said I looked skinny in. Um, you know, this is the outfit that I wore on my very first date. So we're holding on to the past and then there's a part of it that's in, in fear of what might happen in the future. You know, one day I might need this pink tutu again. <laughs> one Did you, you haven't been in my closet, have you? <laughs> <laughs> and I will need that tutu when I have my little girl and we walk around the malls together. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Well, that, that's actually a funny thing, though. You'd be surprised what we do find in the wardrobe, and that's the most fascinating part of the process. Um, you know, there's also this, one day we're going to lose 18 kilograms and fit into this again. But the thing is, we're not actually dressing for the present. There's 20% there's of the wardrobe that is the part that we rely on that, you know, that'll do. That'll do. I've worn that before. That'll do. Um, and we know that what we do in one area of our life, we do in every other. So if we're setting, settling for that or do, then in the wardrobe, then we're settling for that or do in so many other areas of our life too. Um, so once we've created the blank canvas, removed all the, um, the weakest links, only put back in the things that are representation of the brand now, we hit the stores, we create the new visual, and then we photograph all the outfits so that, you know, our clients are busy. They have no... They're thriving professionals who do not want to be wasting time on choosing what to wear each day or rushing out to the shops to find something. So they get a catalog of all their outfits, they flick through on their iPad, they choose it, they put it on and they go. And oh. that's a big part of our process. So do you like? So do you look at the client, you've obviously spent time with them or you or your team, have been to their home, looked through their closet, heard their story, found out a bit more about them, and then you choose what stores you're going to take them to? So is that when, when your expertise comes in or do they suggest to a store that they liked? How does that work? Uh, yeah, they just say, hey, this is the, um, the budget I'm willing to play with. Um, we call it the investment I'm willing to play with. And then our responsibility is to fill all the gaps in their wardrobe so it supports their lifestyle and their mission um, really effectively. And we need to shop. We need to create a full wardrobe by full meaning dual season, autumn, winter, spring, summer. We're only shopping twice a year. And if you're in Hawaii, it's just summer, 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 summer. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, so what was I going? Yeah, so our responsibility is to create the wardrobe and the looks um, that's going to support their brand. And so people who want to take it further from there, so basically anyone could do that, just a, even if it's a, a stay-at-home mom. Essentially, they could do that with you just to improve confidence, but I know that you uh, focus a lot on entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs usually take it to the next step, I believe, which is like whether it be the website or the photo shoots, and what do you do there? Yeah, so our market are entrepreneurs and professionals. The content that we deliver within the sessions, because we're not talking about fashion, we are talking about personal branding and business, doesn't really suit the stay-at-home mums. But there are so many other businesses in Australia that, that are perfect for that. Um, so the entrepreneurs here are on a really big journey. And so that we've revamped the, the pieces of fabric, if you will, and now they're jumping up in front of um, audiences on stage or presenting to camera to produce their online course material or do interviews like this. Um, so we teach them how to be on brand on stage. And what I mean by that is we're not creating a cookie cutter version of what our presenter talks and walks like. It's about how can we get your authentic essence on brand confidently so that the market is really connecting with you genuinely and also on camera. I mean, there are so many people that as soon as I step up in front of this piece of metal, they freeze. That was me. <laughs> it was the first time. I forgot my name. I was like, shit, I don't even know how old I am. I don't know what my name is. It is a piece of metal that we can literally pick up and smash. So it's about how can we deliver this content authentically um, in a way that we can connect with our market. So do you think that people automatically um, like feel better or their posture is better when they're dressed in something that, like, would you ever see, I guess you probably would do the process first, but someone that you kind of put on camera and what they were wearing and who they're being and then put them on camera again once they've had their sort of personal brand developed. There must be just such a world of difference. Absolutely. I'm actually obsessed with the link between self-confidence and pieces of fabric that I employed Core Data Australia and we ran a survey and interviewed over 550 professional women across Australia to find out how the pieces of fabric are affecting the way that they um, communicate and how they walk and how their confidence levels. 94% of women said that when they like what they are wearing, their confidence increases. 74.5% said that when they like what they're wearing, the way that they walk is different. They walk with a lot more confidence. And 54.5 said that they communicate um, poorly when they don't like what they're wearing. So it's amazing how much of an impact these pieces of fabric have. That's incredible. And it must also be like everything, right, from your like what you're wearing under your clothes to 
your shoes to everything. So it's not just the, the one thing. And I find that, I find that fascinating because I definitely know sometimes you go through your wardrobe and you're just going to pick a kind of thing and you feel a million times better when you pick, no, I'll wear this again. Even though I've worn it before, it makes me feel great and I'll wear that again. So that's, um, that's my own, my own personal take on it. But do you have some, like a really good piece of advice that those savvy chicks watching today could implement straight away? on any of the levels of your business or what you do or just from a personal point of view? Yeah, sure. Um, the very first thing that came to mind was is such a big thing, but representing who you really are, not who you think you should be. So sh um, the quickest way to smash down and destroy self-confidence is when we look at how other people are doing it and doing it the way that we we think it should be done rather than going, you know, who am I? Starting back at us. Who am I? What do I really want? Who do I really want to be working with? How do I really want to be working with them? And then, you know, playing on that, going all in on that. So it doesn't have to be, you know, fancy or look super professional. It's just really who you are. Is that... Yes, and that's actually what, um, you know, the process really isn't about building upon. It's really unraveling, um, removing the things that aren't us. It really isn't... Um, a moving process rather than a building process. That's, um, that, I mean, it's been fantastic advice and I love, you know, just sharing what you're doing because it's incredible and it can help so many entrepreneurs who are, you know, hiding behind a shadow of themselves, as, as you often say, to really step out. But something that, as you know, is very important to my heart is the young women out there who are watching, even if the girls or the teenage girls out there um, who lack self-confidence. What's a piece of advice you can give those girls to help with their self-confidence, again, something they can do today? Probably similar to what you just said, but if you have some different advice, that'd be great too. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, I worked for teenagers for seven years at the Susan Johnson Australia course where we ran through image development. Um, and I noticed that the girls that were coming there were um, under the pretense that it's not okay to feel nervous or scared before you do anything. So my piece of advice would be, you know, the fear is never going to go away. Um, it's okay that you're feeling scared or nervous about putting yourself out there or doing what it is that you really want to do. Um, just create a really strong support network around you and learn first and foremost, you know, the thoughts that you really are thinking that are creating, creating your reality. That's perfect. That is so beautiful. I need to put that in a little clip and reshare just that, that wonderful piece of wisdom. Thank you so much, Colette. You've been amazing today and always. You know, really look forward to continuing to see what you, what you do in, in this empire you build, which I know is mainly in Australia, but no doubt going global and very soon. So those of you in Hawaii, feel free to connect with her because she is, she is global. Um, and yeah, thank you again for being on the show. For those of you who've been watching, make sure to check out Colette Worlden. Uh, we put her website up throughout the show as well. And um, aloha from us over here. Oh.